Welcome or welcome back to another short, but definitely not sweet true crime. I am your host, Shani, and you are listening to Shani Horror and Vibes. This week's short, but definitely not sweet true crime case is over the real Friday the 13th killer, David McGravy. Your discretion is highly advised. It does have small children that is involved in the story, and it is very graphic. If that is not something you're into, I completely understand. I have plenty of episodes you can go back and check out, and then we'll just come back and talk at the next episode. This is the story of the Friday the 13th killer. David McGravy was born in 1951 in Southport, Lanchester. He had five siblings, and their family moved around a lot due to his father being in the Army. David attempted to join the Navy and to make a career out of it, but he was dismissed due to starting a fire that would destroy a water room. He moved back in with his parents. He fell in love. He got engaged. But that quickly all fell apart, too, because David wasn't able to keep a job because he became a heavy drinker and would get fired. So his wife left him, well, fiance, and his parents forced him to move out. In 1972, David moved in with his friend Clive and his wife Elsie. They had a small family of three children, Paul who was four, Don who was two, and Samantha who was eight months old. Since Clive worked long hours as being a driver and Elsie returning back to work, David was there to help babysit the kids while both of the parents were gone. On April Friday the 13th in 1973, Clive left the house with the children sleeping in the car because he was on his way to pick up Elsie from work that night. But instead, he stopped to pick up David first, who was very drunk from a bar. He took David and the children home and then left back out to go pick up Elsie from work. When Elsie returned back home, their neighborhood was surrounded by cops. They didn't know what was going on, and nor did they think that the cops were at their house. But when they did reach to their house, the cops quickly escorted them to the police cars to take them to the police station where they learned what took place in their home that night. Between the hours of 10.15 p.m. and 11.15 p.m., baby Samantha was reportedly crying. David could not handle Samantha crying. He began violently attacking Samantha, leaving her with skull fractures. He then slit two-year-old Don's throat and strangled four-year-old Paul. But that wasn't the end of what David did to these poor babies. After that, he then goes downstairs in the basement, locating a pickaxe, further mutilating all their tiny bodies before carrying each and last one of them outside and placing them on a spike iron rod fence on the neighbor's yard before leaving. Police located and arrested David at 3.50 a.m. And David denied having any involvement of what happened to the children at first, but then he ended up telling the truth. He never gave a real reason why he did what he did to the other two children, but he did say Samantha just would not stop crying. On June 28th, David pled guilty to all three murders and was sentenced to multiple life sentence with a minimum of 20 years that was needed to be spent. Most of David's years in prison was spent in protective custody due to that he was suffering extreme punishment from the prisoners. In December of 2018, David was released on parole after spending 45 years in jail. The parole board believed that David has changed a lot over that time and that he is okay enough to return back to society. As for Clive and Elsie, their whole life was just turned upside down. They was completely devastated because they could not believe that David would do such a thing to their children. Like they've never seen him act any such kind of way besides as a good babysitter and role model to their kids. So they were just taken back by this a lot, and so much so that they eventually split apart. Now, there was a report that Elsie was trying to end her own life and was saved. She stated that every day that she wakes up, she has to relive this nightmare of what David did to her children, which is just completely heartbreaking. And there's no way for nobody to even say they understand how she feels because nobody will understand how she feels to have three children taken away from her by somebody she trusted in their home and that is it for this week's short but definitely not sweet true crime case of the friday the 13th killer david mcgravy he is currently out y'all walking around freely and i just cannot believe it because i wouldn't let nobody out there did that to them kids he's had time to stop and think what he was going to do to each and last one of those kids it wasn't like they all suffered the same fate he did something different to each and last one of those kids which means you thought about it you took time to think about what you were going to do next 
that right there shows it was premeditated. He should have been in jail for the rest of his life. He should have just withered away and not even been underneath protective custody whenever the uh, prisoners were giving him what he deserved rightfully. Sorry, not sorry. Let me know what you thought about this week's true crime case in the comment section below. Before you go, please make sure that you are subscribing to my channel and my social medias so you don't miss out on any true crime, horror, or book-related blogs that I decide to put out. Talk to you guys next time.